you. Thank you very much, Acting Speaker. And I too rise to speak on the Legislative Council amendments to the Youth Justice Bill. And from the outset, can I commend the great amount of work that the member for Berwick and the Shadow Police Minister have done uh, on behalf of the opposition and together with the Shadow Attorney General and the member for Malvern on putting together the opposition's uh, near, I think, 300 uh, amendments that we took to the Upper House a couple of weeks ago. And we know the uh, other place sat very uh, late into the night and early into the next morning to pass uh, a number of the amendments that the opposition put through. But unfortunately, Acting Speaker, the bill that comes back before us today with the amendments that the government has passed does nothing really to address the youth crime crisis in Victoria. It does nothing to uh, reverse the position that the Allen Labor government took earlier this year to weaken Victoria's bail laws. At a time when we've seen youth crime spike by 20%, we've seen crime, criminal incidents in Victoria increase by more than 10%, but that youth crime figure of 20%, we've seen this government decide to weaken Victoria's bail laws. And while we've heard from the government over the past week, uh, we saw these uh, amendments come into the upper house, amendments to the government's own bill that has been in the making for many years. And then at the last moment, uh, a raft of amendments from the government to their own bill because of the pressure from the Victorian community that the rise in youth crime is simply unacceptable. Victorians are afraid to uh, be in their homes. Shop owners are concerned about the level of retail theft and retail theft that is violent. Uh, in my own electorate of Kew, and I've spoken about this previously, and uh, just in the last week of Parliament, we asked the Premier directly about the impact on shop owners and shop attendants when they are in their stores and young offenders come in with machetes, with axe, and threaten them and hold them at knife point. And we know that these offenders have been out on bail, and they repeat offend and repeat offend. It's very, very clear that the system is simply not working for Victorians and not working to keep Victorians safe. And I think everyone in this House would agree that one of the most important roles of responsible government is to keep its citizens safe. That is one of the most important priorities that a government can do. And unfortunately, we're seeing a bill come back to before us today that does not improve the safety or help reduce the youth crime rate in Victoria. And despite the amendments that go to bail in particular, the changes to bail that the government has brought forward, these only go to Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 offences while on bail. Previously, it applied to all indictable offences. And the member for Malvern this morning gave a very simple example of a, uh, a service station that might be a victim of an armed robbery that these changes will apply to, but should an arson attack happen at that service station, these changes will not apply. The opposition has been very, very clear from the outset, from the moment these changes came before the parliament, that we did not support them. We moved amendments to make sure that uh, committing an indictable offence whilst on bail remained an offence in this state. Yet we saw the government weaken those bail laws and it's Victorians that continue to pay the price. In my own electorate of queue, we've seen uh, increase in crime of around 6.9% year on year, with a 17% increase in aggravated residential burglary. I have constituents reach out to me regularly, Acting Speaker, to express their concerns and their fears when it comes to the crime crisis in this state. And let me just refer to a number of these. I received an email from a local constituent who says, another attempted aggravated burglary at 4.29am this morning. Our third attempt in 12 months. The police were amazing through triple zero. However, it was another extremely scary 
Expo again, hearing someone try to open your doors, front and back, in the middle of the night. I know we weren't the only home that was attempted on the street at this time. Another constituent acting speaker who has reached out to share their own horrifying story. Last Saturday morning, 3.50 a.m., two people attempted to break into our house in Borwin North, and whilst the police caught one of them, the other got away. This incident has really shaken us up, particularly given the one that got caught was armed. In fact, my wife refuses to stay home alone. I've since found out this incident isn't a once-off, but a nightly occurrence across Burundara. These are just two examples of the many, many emails, the many people I speak to across the electorate who come and raise their concerns, particularly about the rise in aggravated burglary and not feeling safe in their homes. I have a number of local constituents who come and raise the fact that their children simply are not prepared, teenage children, children entering their 20s, to be home alone anymore because of the fear of someone coming and trying to break into their home overnight. And unfortunately, what we see from these young offenders is repeat offenders. Time and time again, they are out on bail, night on night. We hear it from the police. And we must give credit to the police who are doing everything they can with the limited resources that they do have. We have a thousand vacancies when it comes to police on the beat in Victoria. We've had 43 uh, police stations have to reduce their hours and not be open overnight because this government has failed to properly resource our police force here in Victoria. And so we're looking at an issue where our local police are doing everything that they can do, but they've got their hands tied behind their back. They catch these offenders, they turn up at these uh, incidents, they come in as quickly as they can to support these families, yet by the next morning, these offenders, these youth offenders, are most likely back out on bail. And I pay credit to our own local Burundara police station uh, and the inspector there, Sandy McIver. We actually had last week, Acting Speaker, a community forum led by Burundara police about many of these issues. And it was very, very clear in that room that people have simply had enough, that they feel like this government is letting them down time and time again when it comes to the youth crime crisis in this state. We just recently, over a, a month or so ago, had a armed attack at one of the uh, Shell service stations in the electorate where youth offenders came in uh, wielding machetes and held at knife point the young attendant who was on duty at the time. This was in the early hours of the morning on a busy road and this young offenders came in with machetes and held him at knife point. And I turned to the operations manager for a group of IGAs and food works, who I quote, said, our bail laws and courts are weak. The assailants are getting younger, all while the government is trying to raise the age for charging people. The government and courts have little care for the victims. And what's very clear, Acting Speaker, and what's clear throughout the process of the Youth Justice Bill coming before the parliament is that the pendulum has swung too far towards supporting the perpetrator rather than supporting the victims. And we certainly saw that, Acting Speaker, in the Youth Justice Bill that actually looked to take away the voice of victims of youth crime when it comes to having a say on parole matters. Luckily, the member for Berwick, the Shadow Attorney General, the member for Malvern, uh, put forward an opposition amendment to address this issue, and the government eventually was dragged to the table and supported it. But this was taking away the voice of victims when it comes to the impact of youth crime on them and their families. Acting Speaker, youth crime is of incredible concern in this state. We hear day in, day out about the incidents right across Victoria. Just this morning, we heard about the car accident by youth offenders in Hawthorne. My own godchildren were on their way to school and walking past at the time. It's a very busy intersection. And 
We are just so lucky that no one was hurt. But this is the consequences of mismanaging our uh, youth justice system and not putting in place appropriate bail laws in this state to prevent it from continuing.